It is the best of times. At no other time in human history has there been less war or invasion, plagues or pestilence, slavery or poverty. There has never been more knowledge, education, and instant availability of information literally in the pockets and at the fingertips of more people than there is now. We are empowered, free, and masters of our own destiny. We are civilized and enlightened, and the major problems which plagued humanity for millennia have largely been solved. But it is the worst of times. We boast of social progress, from the pagan ignorance of slavishly worshipping idols crafted by human hands. Instead, we cast aside the lofty ambition of discovering natural law or objective truth, and claim that the morality of whatever is legislated is derived from the mere authority to legislate it. We are worshipping precedents and laws crafted by human hands as somehow holy or sacred. Regardless of all their other virtues or accomplishments, we pull down statues of slave owners who had the callousness of heart to treat any fellow man as mere property to be acquired or disposed of, ignorant of the infinite worth and inherent dignity of every living human. We stand in condemnation of those who barbarically cast their own babies into the fires of Molech in vain hopes of personal prosperity millennia ago. Discarding the progress of centuries before us, our social enlightenment has not progressed. Once again, we are barbaric, treating certain classes of human life as second class or worse, disposable property. We may not be able to hear the heartbreaking screams of newborn infants in the searing hot hands of a stone idol, but we are a society that deliberately terminates the lives of many, many more unborn children each year. As many living humans as fill the stadium for the AFL Grand Final each year are sacrificed in the sterile abortion clinics of Australia. We enjoy blissful ignorance of the actual procedures used to kill little humans and take comfort that surely no practitioner of the honourable trades of medicine or law would betray our trust in them to do no harm and defend the innocent. We actively censor and ban all knowledge of the fact that children are sliced and diced in the womb before being vacuumed out like garbage, or when more developed, have their skulls crushed and are torn limb from limb before the bloody gore is reassembled on a stainless steel surface to ensure no piece of this new person was left inside her mother. There is no independent counselling for the poor women or girls who find themselves in incredibly difficult circumstances, no compassion for the numbers of them there without free choice, but by the abusive coercion of their partner or parents or rapist. There is no informed consent with full disclosure of the many well-documented risks, balanced presentation of the other choices she may prefer, or cooling off period to consider the weight of the consequences of terminating that life. We lie without flinching when we call ourselves pro-choice and offer no funding or encouragement for more than one choice. The manifest truth is we are only pro the abortion choice. In Queensland, whose unaccountable government is currently railroading the state into grossly liberalising abortion, there are about 14,000 children killed every year in abortion clinics and a mere handful, not even a dozen, adopted by the many families desperately wanting a child, offering those unwanted by others a permanent, safe home with them. Queensland offers no government support or services to pregnant mothers choosing to permit their babies to live with the choice of adoption. But the bad Jackie Trad abortion bill, already rejected twice and overwhelmingly opposed in polling, petitions and parliamentary submissions, ignores the needed solutions and seeks only to offer more children on the fatal altar of personal autonomy and prosperity. Our social conscience has buried the objective reality of the science and the ethics which demand acknowledgement that every single successful abortion kills a living human and significantly harms his or her mother. We use confected outrage and evasive language to change the topic and camouflage the facts. We prefer to talk about secondary issues, 
which require us to assume there is only a woman's body and woman's rights to be considered. But that assumption is grossly ignorant of the inescapable fact that science conclusively observes that every human life began at conception. From the moment the spark of life occurs, when sperm and egg fuse to create a new person, that embryo is human by species and living by scientific definition. Even the term fetus is not an escape from the inconvenient reality. Its definition acknowledges it is a little one. Like a stowaway on a ship at sea, whether the passenger is there with or without permission of the captain of the vessel, the captain has a moral obligation to fulfill her duty of care to that person, little or large, until they can be delivered to a safe harbour. It is said truly that in this age of information, ignorance is a choice. Resources like abortionprocedures.com fully empower us to be informed about the reality of what really goes on in first, second and third trimester abortions. I challenge you to open your eyes and watch all three, and still insist it's just a woman's body, a woman's choice. The lawyers and legislators who scorn the fight for the universal human right to life desperately tried to hide the fact of the evidence of humanity being rejected by even denying the mercy of pain relief for the little lives being extinguished in late-term abortions. Even though at the same stage of development, children being operated on in utero would be given anaesthetic. It is the worst of times, because laws permitting such barbarism are common around Australia. These laws, killing the equivalent of multiple classrooms of unborn children every day, are the single greatest justice issue facing this generation. Every other election issue pales into insignificance while we are sanctioning the deliberate deaths of tens of thousands of our own unborn citizens. Legislation or precedent which contradicts the natural law is nothing more than a fraud on the people. And even if voters don't, God will judge those who cause such immense suffering among those they were appointed to protect. Exalting that which we have crafted by our own hands to replace laws which God gave us to be discovered by our reason is pure and simple idolatry. And despite the centuries of progress beyond paganism, such laws are complete regression to the pagan fires of child sacrifice. But as voters, we must judge them. We cannot be any more silent about this than we could if our neighbours were being sold into slavery. Living humans are not disposable property, and unborn children are not second-class humans. We promised never again when Jews were deemed subhuman, second-class citizens, ineligible for fundamental human rights. It hasn't even been 100 years, and already we're participating in another far greater holocaust, this time on the unborn. There is absolutely no justification whatsoever for the deliberate and intentional murder of an innocent living human ever. Yet globally, tens of millions of innocent lives are being terminated every year in the name of human progress and personal autonomy. So exactly what are we doing about it? Imagine if every political candidate in your state received individual emails from just 1,000 undecided voters in their electorate, offering to vote, donate, and volunteer for candidates who promise to fight for every living human's right to life and liberty. Most candidates would fall over themselves to get that kind of support, Sure, there are many who would be immovable in their rationalised injustice, but we don't need them. We only need one candidate in each electorate to create a pro-human rights parliament. What we really need is a generation of voters who realise they can dictate the election issues and are willing to use that power for objective justice and to defend the innocent. The question now is, what kind of society do we want to create to be inherited by the kids that survive pregnancy? Do we want a society that claims to be enlightened while sacrificing our conscience with our children in the name of personal autonomy? Or like generations before us, which fiercely fought against dehumanizing tyrannies like slavery, do we want to be the kind of society that solves the largest justice issue of our day, the Holocaust of the unborn? 
A poll taken among Queenslanders this year reveals 76% oppose late-term abortions past 23 weeks. 62% agree a fetus at 23 weeks is a person with rights. 75% agree abortion harms women's health. 26% personally know someone pressured to have an abortion. 62% oppose abortion past 22 weeks for social reasons. 52% oppose abortion for any reason until 22 weeks. And 83% oppose sex-selective abortion. Does the government care this generation is rejecting abortion? How can we even still be talking about this? We knew this was wrong thousands of years ago. Even without the many advances of society, ultrasounds and civil society since the 19th century, when the current laws were created, we knew even then that there was a tiny human life at stake. How can we be so barbaric a society as to say, it's okay to kill the most vulnerable and innocent among us? Whose body ends up in the bucket? It's time we stood up to be counted and declared with one voice that every human life is precious and worth defending at every stage. I choose to open my eyes and see the truth, see the genocide, see the solution. I choose to open my mouth and offer my support to the candidate from any party who will fight for the justice of natural law, the fundamental human right to life and liberty without discrimination against race or age. I choose to believe and make it reality that my generation will end abortion.